It's the 7th of September. We've just had our transfer window. We've also got our first draws in European competition. And we have been busy in both the league, the cups, and our transfers. Ali left us on a free transfer. We were not willing to pay him the six grand he wanted. Campbell came in and are now paying him 7.25 grand a week. So quite frankly, I was never going to pay him that much money. He wasn't even going to be able to be registered in European competition, so I had to make the decision to cut him. He actually left us by himself. We didn't kick him out. He decided to leave after I refused to give him the money he wanted. And now he's at Canberra in the Netherlands. So clearly, he's getting good money there. That we've done some more transfer business. Was there any significant deals that we did in the meantime? Alex Sasbo is out on loan again, this time in Romania. I could have and perhaps even should have kept him around for the homegrown status, but I just realized he was never going to be good enough for the team, so I had to let him go. We sold this guy to a divisional rival for £18,000. We were never going to use him, and it made sense in my mind to get rid of him. He's only a last resort player for our point of view now, so clearly we made the right call. Will Jaskalani is out on loan to Motherwell. He wasn't going to be playing he also wasn't really helping with the um homegrown status of the champions league and european registration so i had to make the decision to let him go it means that our backup is not exactly amazing but at the end of the day it's not the end of the world he's playing and he's actually getting first team football i think they can sign him yes they can sign for 190 thousand pounds so if we get that money for a player that we signed for just 63000 we've done well for ourselves, really. Stefan Hasek is the first player we bought since we last met, though. He actually doesn't really fit the kind of role I want, but I can adjust my strategies for him. He's not the playmaker I'm looking for, but he would absolutely be a good player to have either way. A good ball win midfielder, a good anchor man, and a halfback, or even a Saguna Falante if I needed to go down that route, but... Yeah, he's a good player that I can rely on to be useful. He's not amazing, I will admit, but I signed him on a compensation deal worth 51000 I think I can make a profit back from him, quite frankly. Our last signing was Victor Kazakov, and we signed him perhaps for too much money, but he's at his replacement long term. He's also someone that we are going to try and get in the homegrown status in the future. And for £850,000, we may have ever spent a little bit on him, but I think he is someone we can utilise long term. Yes, he's not perfect right now, but I think given his age, he will be able to develop for us and he will become a good player. It also helps his case that the player he's the backup for is on a leave of absence right now. Yes, James Morris is on a leave of absence for 21 more days because he failed to learn Hungarian. I didn't know that was a thing that could happen. Hindsight, looking at this, I probably should have sold him. And I probably could have got some good money for him. But at the same time, I think I can still get some money for this guy. He's got two years left in his current deal. So it's not the end of the world. I do really like this guy. I think he's still my first choice left back. But he's not back until 22 days. He's going to be missing the game we have today. But we've also had a load of games since we last met. So... How have we been getting on? Well, we took a Giamut and beat them 4-1. We were really good. Graf finds Bagala, who gets the opening goal of the game for his first league goal of the year. So that's a good start. Just before halftime. But they equalised. And I was thinking, oh, okay, that's not ideal. Then Bagala gets a penalty. His second penalty of the season already. And then, for whatever reason, it gave him the confidence to start going... Start doing good, good things. But God, I completed his hatch with this effort to make it free. And then we hit them on a counter-attack ourselves. Okay, okay. Finds the ball. Finds Noel. He finds Bagada. And Bagada finds his fall for the game. He's running the show here. And you would not have thought he was really good before this game. But suddenly, Bagada has become outstanding. And he might be my bargain pickup of the season so far. But there you go. A very good signing, a very good league debut. Can he keep it up? Well, we took the new Saints at home, and I did put a strongest squad out, and Bagala scores the opening goal to make it 1-0 to really put us in firm control. I wouldn't have enough, they equalise. So again, we give up an equaliser when we don't want to be, 
But again, we are in a position where more scores, but we still decide to take offense to it and then score a lot of goals. We score five more goals in response to that. But Garlic gets his second of the game with this effort, and it's only 90 minutes in. We then make it free with this effort. Hambelek plays Bagala in. Bagala completes his hat trick inside 25 minutes in the Champions League. He's already got eight goals this year. But we decide to start sharing the goals a little bit more. Hambelek getting his first goal of the game with that effort. And it's still half time, still the first half. We then make it a first goal in the second half. Bagadur with this effort to get his first goal for the club. And then we decide to finish things off with this effort. Matthias plays it across, finds Sigonet. Sigonet gets his first goal of the year to make it 6. A 6-1 six victory in a game that we were never in danger of losing. And we win 9-2 overall. We then took a Deborah San and we took the lead inside 76 minutes. No, finds Matthias. He finds the opening goal of the game and I thought, you know what? We're going to win this game. We're going to be fine. Then they score from this corner, and this is outrageous, that header. One of the best headers I've ever seen, and he was scored against us. And we drop points to draw one all, and to draw in the league for the first time this season. I wish it was not at home. Then we took on Shem Rovers in the Champions League, and Kusawa gets the opening goal of the game with this effort. We then make it two, and get the last goal of the game with this effort. But God has shot his blocks, but Sigonet scores. He's playing the left wing here. He doubles our lead to give us firm control against a side from Ireland. We then took a slug as that and Sigonet scores the only goal of the game with that penalty to get his first league goal of the year. And to help us get three points against a team that has caused me problems both in pronouncing their name and just playing against them in football matches. So a good win. We then took on Shamrock Rovers in the second leg of the Champions League and we were 1-0 up after Hambalik scores this goal and I think we're in firm control we're not going to screw things up but they equalize and I was a bit shocked when this goes in a ball over the top Tinlin gets a shot and we just don't deal with it unfortunately and we draw in the Champions League but it's not enough to cause us problems we still go through to the next round we then took and found Faust and went 1-0 down inside 33 minutes Wallace finds Serino and I was thinking oh god are we about to lose this game thankfully not because we equalise in the 95th minute of the game. Corsa Tirana finds Hambalek. Hambalek scores this goal to give us a share of spoils. And we rescue ourselves out of a sticky situation. We might have dropped points twice already this year. But we're not losing games at all yet. And that's a good sign. We then took a Celtic in the Champions League and went 1-0 down inside 5 minutes. Johnson finds Kyogo. And Carter Vickers scores the opening goal. And I thought to myself, we're going to lose, aren't we? Second half, we equalise, thankfully. Graf, being a pain in the backside, plays across to find Bagada. He scores a goal for his ninth of the season, and then we win it. Wilson finds Graf, he finds Wilson, finds Noel, he finds Graf, and Graf scores that goal. A delightful finish, and it gives us an advantage going into the second leg at their ground. Can we hold on? No, because actually, in normal time, we lost 1-0. Tilio does that. I don't know what the person there is doing. What a KK is trying to do. He just runs past Tilio. But we equalised in the night and win overall after this ball goes in and the Dragon scores his first goal of the season. Dragon Mertenovic gets his first goal. Richard Kup, who is a homegrown left back, gets an equaliser, gets an assist. And I'm delighted. We share the spoils on the night, but win 3-2 overall to get to the Champions League league phase for the very first time. I'll show you who our opponents are after our last league games. The next game we had was at home against Fanfar, and we did not look good in the first half. We could see his own goal. Savage looked a bit embarrassed by the whole situation. But we bounced back, and we took an equaliser. Very nicely done. The Dragon scores again. The player that I thought was going to be my main striker is starting to find the goals after coming back from his injury. And now we're starting to find our feet. It took us until 74 minutes to get this goal, but Hambalit scores that finish. And then Sigonet scores his penalty to make it free. We've got some reliable players this year in front of goal, and I'm delighted by it. 
It's just a shame that our last game before the summer transfer window shuts, we lose despite taking the lead. Savage gets the opening goal inside two minutes. We then conceded equalizer in the 38th minute. I don't know why we didn't track some of these runners, but okay. But it was before half time we could see the goal that would eventually win the game. Chekhovich plays it across and Moha scores again, his second of the game. And we just could not cope with him for whatever reason. And we lose our first league game of the year. Speaking of the league, we're down in third place. Three points off second, four points off first. But it's early days. I also know that it's because of all our European competition that we're struggling right now in the league and we need to do better and better. So I'm not saying it's completely down to how bad a squad is or anything like that. It's more down to I had to rotate a lot. Um, it's cost us some games as well as a response. We don't have the squad, I don't think, ready for the two games a week fixture list right now. Especially against some of the opponents we've been facing. So, it's not ideal. We just need to grow into the season, I think, going forward from here. Speaking of the Champions League, we've been given our fixtures and we've been given Manchester United at home, Feyenoord away, Dinamo Zagreb at home, Barcelona away, Red Star away, Red Bull Salzburg at home, Bayern Munich away, Atletico Madrid at home. It is not the kindest of draws and I don't see us getting into the top three for this year. If we're lucky, I think we can get wins against Dinamo Zagreb, Red Star and Salzburg, but I've also been scouting their teams. And I also realise we might be in for a tough challenge this year. I would not be shocked if we don't get a single point going into these round of fixtures. That's how much I think we're up against it this season. That being said, we've got the title odds as well for the Champions League and we're at 10,000 to 1. We're one of the weakest competitions we're one of the weakest teams in the competitions and we should not be surprised if we get absolutely destroyed. None of the players that we have are in the top goal scores list, understandably so. And if you look at the players that we're up against, this is going to be a very difficult year. I would not be shot if we get knocked out early doors. But how did the other teams in Europe do? Because we only really could rely on two other teams because one of the teams were never going to get far. So we're going to go over this. And yeah, first qualifying round of the Europa League by this team from Azerbaijan was not great. Got to be honest with you, I wish they'd never won it. We should have won the cup or something. We should have had at least Vassas in the cup and then got knocked down the third qualifying round by that team. And oh my word, it was not great. You're also going to see Depresseni lost this, this round as well. They lost 3-2 overall. Fran Fowler's got to the next round though. And then proceed to get knocked out by Habba Beshiva. So that's all of our teams out in this round. We've got just ourselves in the league phase and that's it. And we're going to be absolutely dismantled by every team in the competition. So you can see why I'm a little bit annoyed with the other teams in Hungary right now. for Their lack of presence in Europe. That being said, we are somehow, I don't know how this is the case, Somehow in third place in the coefficients right now, but we've also played a lot of games. It's mostly down to us at this point because Bam Forest, you're expecting them to get at least one win, but the fact that they didn't even make it through to the next round is very disappointing. The Brasini, you'd expect them to get better. And the other team, I was never expecting them to do well, so it's one of those things. I am going to take my anger out on some of these teams, but what can you do? And as things stand, I don't see us guessing a better year than the year we're losing, so that's not ideal. Norway's having a horrifying year though, so we are getting a place on them right now. Though the nations below us, AK Serbia, I think are going to overtake us and we're not going to have a very nice year. So we are expected to lose at least one position to coefficients this year. And to show you what I mean, let's do the Manchester United game now because I like pain and suffering apparently. Also, this is the thing I'm going to announce here before this game starts. Don't expect uploads every day for the Christmas holidays. I'm expecting like... A video every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Hopefully, that's a plan. Most because of the Christmas holidays and New Year stuff, I feel like it's the best course of action and it makes more sense long term. So, I think after the New Year, things will start to get back to the old routine. But just don't expect anything to be the routines we already have before then, though. That's what I'm going to say. But yes, Champions League, it's not great. We've literally not got enough paper on the bench, apparently. 
I've not realized how bad the problem was at the bench. And both my left back and right backs are not great. So what the heck do I do here? Who can I even put on the bench? Because of injuries galore. The reason this guy's not been playing is because he literally tore his thigh muscle in August. And I would have put him in otherwise. My right back is already on the field. My backup right back. So that's a problem. And yeah, between lever action, not being able to register Victor, not through my own designs at all. Trust me, I would have had him in the squad otherwise. We've not got the squad we want. And we've got a lot of strikers on the bench, I've realised. So potential problems to work around in the future, I think. I've not built the squad very well, I've realised here and now. But yeah, it is unfortunate. We are going to hope for the best. We've still got injuries and leave absent people. So, if it wasn't for James Morris being absent, we could do things. Hindsight definitely is a beautiful thing. I should have sold him. Look at this now. But what can you do? If he still is upset by Christmas or Windsor, we're sending him. So, that's a thing. Either way, let's see how we do against Manchester United. Against a squad that should be my stronger squad. Either way, let's get going. Okay, going to be honest with you. I did not see the fact that there will be literally new highlights coming. But I'm not complaining about it because it's actually quite a good sign for me. they got Bruno Fernandes and Endo Fernandes in their team. They've gone for a very interesting formation. They've gone for three at the back formation. And I did not see that coming either. Look at their formation. This is what they've gone for. It's a 3-5-3. Well, it's, yeah, a 3-5-2 formation. Is a typical formation given their manager is Diego Simeone. But we're looking okay. We're not being terrible. I'm hoping we can do good things here. My players made okay as well. We've got some questionable decisions to be made. We've gone cautious because I realize that we're losing the possession game. So we take control of the possession. We take control of everything else. So hopefully that goes well. Let's see how we do in the second half. This is the first slot I've seen so far. It's rash for getting the ball back from Wilson. So... Capello, this is five years in, by the way. So they got Diamande here. Onana's still here. And Disari? He's a... I know Diasi is uh, currently at Chelsea. This is a very interesting squad, but Enzo... Fan they got a few Chelsea players here, actually. Look at this. Diamande, Capello. In fact, it's the first time I'm seeing here. Maz How have they got Mazawi as well, by the way? Andre... Surprised with some of the players they got, honestly. Mount on the ball. I'm not surprised by that. Oh, Rash was in. And that's the opening goal. He, I don't think he's off. He looked on, to be honest with you. But I suppose I shouldn't be shocked if this goes and is a goal. It's been given. We're losing. To be fair, we've done well to keep it to 1-0 for so long. Or to 0-0 for so long. But this is a good ball for Mount. And it's just cut us open. It really has. It's just unfortunate that we've just been cut open so quickly there. How close was it to being offside? It was tight, but not tight enough. Ah, whatever. We've changed our front three. We've got some very nervous and anxious players now. Boxe finds Palaversa. He goes for goal just wide. It's not far off. Okay, that's not bad. It's only a one at defeat. We actually made them work for it as well. So... Well, we only saw one highlight, it was their goal. I don't feel like it's the end of the world. We both got a highlight in the game, and it could have been worse. It's not ideal to have lost our first game, but it's not the end of the world. We definitely did better than expected, and that's all I could ask for, really. Can we do more? I mean, at least we weren't Red Star losing 7-0 to Leon, because that's just bad. But what we're going to be doing is ending this here. I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I hope you guys would like and share this video and that you subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out a lot. How difficult is our Champions League campaign? Can we even begin to try to imagine us getting to the top 24? And how badly will our potentially disastrous Champions League run of form affect us in the league? I want to hear thoughts and opinions on all of that down below but anyway and next time goodbye and well good night